Welcome to the No BS Tour of the CMMI for Development. This is a series of short videos that explain, in a common sense way, what the CMMI is about, how it's structured, why it's useful, and the elements of the model. In each of the videos, we'll talk about a different aspect of the model, and as we go, we'll be able to see how the different parts, called process areas, fit together to make the model useful for reference. But here we'll introduce the model with a little history and the nature and purpose of the model. Chances are, it isn't what you've heard. The CMMI came from the Software Engineering Institute, a U.S. federal lab with the mission of maturing the software engineering profession. The Software Engineering Institute was created when a U.S. government study revealed that software was largely a waste of money and didn't work anyway in many cases, except that we needed it and needed to figure out how to be more consistent in building it. The CMMI originated as the CMM, Capability Maturity Model, for software in 1994, which was developed from a 125-item questionnaire in 1987 about the way software was developed and managed. Between those years, a few thousand engineers and managers noodled on the issues and contributed to the solution. It was inspired by Watts Humphrey, an IBM VP who went to the Software Engineering Institute in Pittsburgh to help programming grow up from an ad hoc art form to a professional engineering discipline. Watts is in a line of quality gurus that include Deming, Duran, and Crosby, and the model reflects those quality principles and practices. But let's see what it is by looking at what it isn't for a moment. The CMMI is not a guideline. It's not a set of processes or procedures to follow. It's not a mandate for improvement. It isn't prescriptive, except in general. It doesn't prescribe a particular way of doing work, only that the way you do work get an expected result as described by the intent of a practice proven valuable over time. It's incomplete. There's a lot of ground it doesn't cover, such as disaster recovery, marketing, organizational structure and change, and the like. So what is it? It's a reference model, a structured description of proven practices in product engineering and engineering management. Consider it a compendium of proven practices developed over a quarter century from a half century of experience by thousands of professionals building software and systems. It's not leading edge, but trailing edge. It's engineering and management 101 rather than 501. But the practices are sound and the model has face, concurrent, and construct validity as measured over time. Not a bad start for a reference book, but it's a place to start, not necessarily to end. And remember, it describes what, not how, which leaves a lot of room for innovation, exploration, and new approaches to product development. In the next video, we'll take